Okay, straight line graphs, and we start with some questions on inequalities. We need to shade the region which satisfies all three of these. So with this one here, x is less than 3. The line that corresponds to this is the line x equals 3. So we're going to plot that first. So the easiest way to do that is to find x equals 3 on the x-axis. And we draw a vertical line through that. Anywhere on that line, x has the value 3. Now we have to decide which side of the line do we want to include in our region. Um, and the easiest way to do that, it may be obvious to you, but if not, uh, do a test point. Okay, pick a point, and the easiest one to try is the origin, naught, naught. And we say to ourselves, does that fit this inequality? Okay, so is the x value for naught, naught less than 3? And the x value is 0, so yes it is. Yes, it fits. And that means we want the origin in our region, so we want everything else that's to the left of the line in our region. So we put our arrows on, and we move on to the next one. The second one, y is greater than minus 2, is going to work uh, almost identically. The line that we need is y equals minus 2. So we find minus 2 on the y-axis, and we plot ourselves a horizontal line there. Anywhere on that line, y has the value minus 2. Then we are going to try, again, let's just try the origin. Uh, use naught naught, and we'll see whether naught naught fits that. So is the y value greater than minus 2? Well, the y, y value at naught naught is 0. So again, yes, it fits, uh, because 0 is greater than minus 2. So we want the origin in the region. Therefore, we want everything that's above the line also in the region. Finally, um, for y is less than x, we're going to plot the line y equals x. And hopefully you know uh, exactly what that looks like. That should be one that you can draw in your, almost in your sleep. A nice uh, diagonal line. Um, Please forgive me, it's quite hard to draw accurate diagonals on the computer, and that's kind of my best effort that I'm doing there. Hopefully yours can be a little bit better than that. Uh, yeah, do yours with a ruler. Um, in any case, we can't use um, naught naught, can we? Hmm. Uh, but it doesn't matter, just pick a really simple point somewhere. So I'm going to pick naught one, which obviously is here, and see if that fits. Is the y value less than the x value? And, of course, the y value here is 1, the x is 0, so no, y isn't less than x. So I don't want uh, the point naught one in my region, so the region must be the other side of the dotted line, below and to the right. So I put my arrows on there, and I can see which side of each of these lines I need to be. And finally, I need to shade in that region there, which satisfies all those arrows, and I forgot to label it R. Um, oh well, too late. And that's your answer. Okay, number 27, we want um, to find the equation of the line which passes through 0, 5, and 3, 17. Now, this is the thing. When you want the equation of a straight line, you're going to need two bits of information. Firstly, you need a point that your line passes through. Secondly, you need a gradient. And straight away, we can see that, um, well, we've got two different points to choose from here, so we've definitely got a point covered. The key thing that we need is to work out the gradient then. So, gradient, we can use delta y over delta x. Remember, that means the difference or the change in y over the change in x. So we subtract the y values and subtract the x values, making sure we get it the right way around. So for the y values, I've got uh, 17 and 5. I'm going to subtract them that way around, so 17 minus 5. And for the x values, I have 3 and 0, so 3 minus 0. And, of course, that comes to 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So 4 is the gradient of my line. Um, so I've got that now. I've got everything I need. I've got a point and a gradient. And in fact, this point here makes my life much easier. This is actually the, the intercept, isn't it? Naught 5 means it goes through 5 on the y-axis. So 5 is my plus c. So I can go straight to writing down the equation y equals mx plus c, so 4x plus 5. And there's my solution. Okay, number 28, we've got a straight line L1, and we know its equation. We're told that L2 is parallel to L1, and L2 passes through the point 3, 2, and uh, we want the equation. Okay, so just like before, if you want an equation, you need two things. You need a point and a gradient. Um, it always comes back to this. So looking at uh, what we've got... Well, we're told that uh, L2 is the line we want, and we're told that it passes through 3, 2. So straight away we've got the point. 
So a bit like before, we just need to work out the gradient. So let's look at the other fact that we know about our line. L2 is parallel to the line L1. And L1 is that one there. And that has a gradient of 2. So if it's parallel to a gradient of 2, then it itself has a gradient of 2. So now we have all the information that we need. We've got a point and a gradient. From this point onwards, there's two ways to go. Okay, you pick the method you like and stick with it. The first method, y equals mx plus c. We know that um, it's therefore going to be y equals 2x plus c, because 2 is the gradient. And we can simply substitute in these values from up here to find out what the plus c is. So if we do that, we replace y with 2, and we replace x with 3, so 2 lots of 3, uh, plus c. And we simply solve that. That will tell me what uh, c is. So 2 equals 6 plus c. Subtract the 6, and that gives me c equals minus 4. Um, and therefore my equation is y equals 2x minus 4. I now know that what the plus c is, it's minus 4. Okay, so that's method 1. If you like that, if that's your favourite, stick with that. Method 2 um, is uh, using the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. The advantage of this is it gives you an equation straight away. So we substitute y1 is 2, x1 is 3, and the gradient m is 2. Um, uh, so we substitute those values in, and all we have to do is rearrange this into the form of our equation. So y minus 2, if we expand the brackets, is 2x minus 6. I'm simply going to add 2 to both sides, so I'm left with y as the subject. y is equal to 2x minus 4. Thankfully, we get the same answer. Right, number 29. We are given a line L, and it passes through the point with coordinates 4, 7, and it's perpendicular to this other line, y equals 2x plus 3, and again, we want an equation. So this is becoming familiar. We need two things. We need a point and a gradient. Um, and again, uh, it passes through 4, 7, so we're given a point. So again, it's a matter of working out the gradient. Um, now, the key thing is we're told that it's perpendicular to the line y equals 2x plus 3, which has a gradient of 2. So our line that we want is perpendicular to a gradient of 2. So the gradient that we need is going to be the negative reciprocal of 2, so minus 1 over 2, or in other words, minus a half. So now we've got the gradient, we've got the point, and we can do it again by two methods like we did last time. So the first method, we write down y equals minus a half x plus c, so I know that's my gradient, and I'm going to substitute in the x and y values, 4 and 7, to work out what the plus c is. So 7 for y is equal to minus a half times 4 for x plus the c, and obviously minus a half times 4, be careful with that one, it's minus 2, so 7 equals minus 2 plus c, and I'm just going to add 2 to both sides to work out that c is equal to 9. So that means that my equation is y equals minus a half x plus 9. So that's method 1. Like before, we're going to do it another way, do it by method 2. This is using y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, where x1 and y1 are the coordinates of a point on the line. So we can replace y1 with 7, m is minus a half, and replace x1 with 4. Um, and again, we just multiply out the brackets and rearrange to get what we want. So uh, minus a half x, and then minus a half times minus 4 is plus 2. So y minus 7 is minus a half x plus 2. I'm simply going to add 7 to both sides, so I have y as a subject. y equals minus a half x plus 9. Thank goodness it's the same as before, and that is the end of the question.